Stuart, you wanted a reaction from your team on Friday night, after Friday night's result rather. It certainly looked as if you got that in the first 20 minutes of tonight. How would you assess the overall game? Uh, I think overall, Scott, there was uh, probably the biggest mixed bag of what we want and what we expect. Um, you know, you rightly say about the first 20 minutes, anybody coming here and sort of blowing Aberdeen out the water as we did for that for that spell, I thought we could have had a fourth goal in there. Uh, the goalkeeper makes an unbelievable save to, to uh, push onto the frame of the goal. Um, but my overriding thought really is um, that them changing uh, personnel, you know, making two changes, obviously, when they find themselves 3-0 down. Um, it spooked us. Uh, it spooked us. We stopped doing the things that we were doing beforehand. Um, and any other factor for me really is, and, and, and this is a bit that frustrates managers, that all three of the goals that we concede are, are from restarts in the game. Um, I think the first one comes in our bottom left corner of the pitch. It's our throwing. Um, we have the right to keep the ball. We have the right to uh, play where we see fit. And we work on that and we look at that. And the second one's a corner kick. And again, we allocate markers and we allocate guys to stick to their task and do their job. And, and, and we came up short with that. And then obviously the third one, from my point of view as well, is a, a, an Aberdeen throw midway in our half. Um, they're easy to go out to the midfield player, the clips at the back post, and we don't defend the back post. So you have two options. You either stop it at source when it goes into the midfield player, or you defend the back post better than what you did. And I know that sounds a wee bit blasé in me saying that, um, but I just felt that the changes sort of spooked us a little bit, spooked one or two on the pitch. And we didn't show a good enough reaction and we just let momentum build in here and the atmosphere started to grow obviously when Aberdeen go in 3-2 all that said when you get in at half time um, a goal up at Pitodri you're in a good place we, we believe it could and should be better but you're still in a good place and it's about having that mentality to realise that it's in a good place and that you don't come out with any kind of fear or anything like that in the second half um, now I'm not labelling the, the, the fact that I'm saying that we, we were scared it's just that I felt that um, changes in different, um, different personnel and a different formation and a different system sort of spooked us um, and I've said that to the players in there we're unbeaten this calendar year um, and beyond that in the league and, and for us to go and maximise the points haul in there we just have to show a greater bravery we have to have a, a better game management and, and we have to have a, a more ruthless streak you know sometimes spoiling a game by emptying an area if we're in the bottom corner as we concede that first goal just making sure that our distances are a wee bit better making sure that we're going to go and turn the Aberdeen defenders and play in their half of the pitch um, those are things that spoil the game in a sense and, 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 and I want us to play free-flowing football I want us to play a lot of the football we've had a lot of credit for you know the chances we create the goals we score so many of our attacking players have been highlighted for their performances I want us to do all those things Scott but sometimes in this league um, you have to you have to realise the situation that they want their tails up for the changes they made um, and I just felt that we made it a little bit too easy for them to get back in the game Our last defeat in the league came on Christmas Eve against Rangers from that first 20 minutes do you think the signs are there with this team like that we could be going in the right direction yeah I do I do um, but again I think I've said it to, to yourselves that I don't want to be standing here saying oh but we could have won that one we should have won that one I don't this is this is a part of football you know this is absolutely a part of football um, and, and, and possibly one of the things even as a player was my favourite thing how, how do you dig in that little bit more how do you grit your teeth just a fraction more to make sure that you come out with the three points um, we'll rightly get plaudits for some of the goals we, we, we scored tonight. I know one's from a penalty, um, but the other the other couple of goals are, are excellent, of real good quality, and created a few more chances in there of quality as well. Um, so we'll get praise for that, but that's fine and well, I expect that, and I believe we're in a position where we are scoring goals and we are um, capitalising on, on opportunities. The bit that pleases me even more was possibly the clean sheet against Ross County last week, because I just feel that that shows that every aspect of your team's functioning really well. You get that clean sheet, um, you get your five goals, which everyone celebrates but it's the nothing against that gets you gets you the win you know that's generally how I see it um, we get back to work quick turn around to, to, to get to Tyne Castle which is going to be another difficult game and what's going to be a, a really difficult spell for us um, but just coming back to what you said I do believe we're in a position where if we continue to play and function the way we are just with that little bit extra steel and that little bit extra grit and determination just to see out moments um, then I think that I'm speaking to you here with three points and um, that's no consolation because I'm disappointed I'm really disappointed off the back of that one um, but we've got some young guys in there and we've got one or two new players either started on in, in the game or came on the pitch um, and it becomes a learning curve for them it becomes a learning curve for us all um, but keep performing like that Scott and I, and, I, and I believe we have the minerals and I believe we have the um, the quality and the experience to get us across the line so um, we get back at it again I'll pick up the players tomorrow when we get into the train 
um, and we'll set out a game plan to go to Tynecastle and, and, and hopefully emulate moments of, of what we had here tonight, but also rectify and tidy up the bits that, that really frustrated me. Just finally, Stuart, you made no secret of how excited you were at the 2,000 fans that were there on Friday night. I know you were talking about the supporters who travelled once again tonight on a cold Wednesday night and they not, they not only made it up here but they stuck by the team when things weren't looking as good. Yeah, I think it um, would be really easy for them to uh, to not come tonight. All the supporters over to my right-hand side there uh, in the away section, it would be really easy for them not to come up to Aberdeen. It's been a poor day weather-wise, as you rightly say, um, and they keep coming and following us. And I think the bit that really pleases me most is we're all frustrated when they come out here with three points where, you know, one or two devastated and rightfully so um, but I've seen their reaction at the end of the game against Scott and they're, they're 100% behind us and um, I think they can see what the players gave them there's a couple of guys down on their knees and on their back at the end of the game because they emptied their tank yet again um, and if we keep doing that I'm fairly certain that the supporters will keep giving us that support even though we did let them down on Friday um, but it's testament to them that they, they came back again and supported us tonight and I'm sure they'll do it at Tynecastle at the weekend Thanks for your time Stuart Cheers Scott